Hi, I'm Kim Ho. In this series, we'll be talking to people who have interesting, inspiring, or intriguing stories to tell. This week, we meet Kiat Lim. Kiat's father is none other than Peter Lim, one of Singapore's richest men with a net worth of more than two billion US dollars. Peter runs several businesses and is also the owner of Spanish football club Valencia. Not surprisingly, Kiat has always had to deal with comments that he's just a rich kid riding on his father's coattails. However, he's trying to carve a niche for himself in the technology sector and is helming several tech platforms, including Zuju GP, a digital community built around football. Suju GP caters to the more than 4 billion football fans worldwide, allowing them to watch live matches, interact with players, play games, buy merchandise, and bet. It also allows club owners and agents to scout for talent. This is Kiat's story. So um, the rationale behind starting Zuju is actually very commercially driven to begin with, right? My dad and I, we noted that the business model within the sport was broken in a sense whereby, you know, costs were rising exponentially and revenues just couldn't keep up. We want to make football, live football in itself, uh, a game, you know, whereby it's immersive, it's interactive, you know, there are different tech stacks layered over the game whereby you can start to interact with it. Taking the notion of traditional means of consuming football very passive, you lay back, you watch the game and you actually interact with the live game, live game to make it very exciting for the user. Cristiano and my father, they're very close. Uh, they go back a long way, right? You know, the first time I met him personally, actually, he was already at Real. He's a nice guy. I mean, I, I don't often get starstruck in a sense, but you know, when I see him, it's like, whoa, he's a specimen of a man, I always say. <laughs> I always say he's a specimen. I mean, he's tall, he's, you know, it, it's been very friendly, you know, because of the relationship he has with, with my father. It, it's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Like, it, it just has been a pleasure. Football is actually something that is a bit more nostalgic for me in a sense. It reminds me about my youth a lot because when I was in school, I, I did play football when I was younger. I had this obsession about going very early to things. So like I had to be the first in school and even when I asked my dad to bring me out to play football, I had to go at like 5 a.m. I don't know why. So it was dark, but my dad would be playing football with me. During the weekends, I would watch games with him. Um, we, I mean, we watch a United game or whatnot. And even when we travel, when we travel, he would definitely sneak a football game in or two. Growing up for me was, I, I mean, there are pros and cons to every single situation. And I believe that, you know, my situation is no different as well. The, the thing that I keep always keep in mind is that I understand that, you know, the situation that I'm in is it, different. I, I'm very lucky and I'm very fortunate to be in this position. But, you know, growing up was actually normal to me. It's all I knew. I, I feel that normality is relative. And, you know, if a child has been exposed to, to this and this, this is all they know, you can't fault them for not knowing better, right? You know, this was all that they were exposed to growing up. I just felt I was a normal kid. I played football, I played basketball. But as I, I, I grew up and I got a bit older, my father started speaking to me about, you know, his hardship growing up. And he acknowledges that even though that him and I were born into very different situations, that, you know, there are still certain values that, you know, we have to keep close, close to heart. Nah. He does teach me a lot on the way as well, because when I was younger, I mean, I catch no ball. Lah. You know, sometimes he, he thinks very quickly and sometimes it takes a bit for me to catch up. So at this point of time, I think that it's quite a humbling experience as well, because at office, sometimes I think that I'm the one that my brain is working faster, but then I go and talk to my old man and he kind of puts me in my place. So I'm like, oh yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's a nice experience that I think I, I'm not sure if I would have been able to go through this with him if it wasn't for you, to be honest. I mean, of course, sometimes people, they hold certain assumptions about you, which is not their fault, you know. It's just assumptions they have, you know. But it sometimes it can be a bit tiring, like, you know. When you meet people, you always have to be a bit nicer. You always have to this. If not, every single action you make is a little bit more scrutinized. Every single word you say is a bit more scrutinized. So, so in general, I, I, I mean, I just get used to it, lah. Like. There's only so many times you can hear Peter Lee make it, and then you, and then you get used to it, right? <laughs> I, I think I've never actually tried to live up to to him or anything like that. Oh, I mean, of course, one day I hope that, you know, I, I, he'll be 
very happy and proud of me. <laughs> but um, I, I also hope that you know I one day too can say that you know I too am capable of great things, right? I, I, I this is something that I aspire to. But I believe that the pressure is only real if you let it get to you. I, I'm not going to use that. You know, it's a lot of pressure as an excuse. I pay my dues. I put in the work. I just believe in the process, you know, I just keep my head down, I do my own thing, I believe in the process and yeah, that, that's the kind of the approach I'm taking. <laughs>